and there we are. That's much more like it. I'm going to let this simulate through and pause the video. Well, I've only simulated an extra couple of frames, but we can already see that something is wrong. And what is wrong is that the wall is starting to collapse in on itself. You can see all of these bricks intersecting each other. And there are a couple of things that we can do to fix this. The first is to look on the collisions tab of the wall setup. And in addition to the volume sub-tab, there is a surface sub-tab, which determines whether you test for intersections using points, in other words, the corners of the bricks, or edges. And it's slower, but more accurate, to use edges. So let's change that to edges. And let's render that again. I'm going to start that off and pause the video, video again. Well, that solved our problem of the wall collapsing in on itself, but we still have an issue here at the sides, which is that the wall is collapsing. What can we do about this? Well, one option is to test different strengths of glue until we get some glue which holds these bricks at the corner together. And you could do that, for instance, using a wedge rop. And there's a tutorial on the wedge rop on the SideFX website. But a more straightforward way to do it is to simply immobilize the bricks that we don't want to move. And this is how we do that. I'm going to rewind the simulation. And now I'm going to select, and I'm going to select this button here, which is Dynamic Objects. And I'm actually going to go into brush picking mode. And then I'm going to brush over my bricks, holding down the shift key so that we're adding bricks. So control and shift rather. And I'm going to select all the bricks that are around the outside of the wall. That should do it. And then with my cursor in the viewport, tab, and group, and we can see group dynamic objects. So let's select that. And you can see that here on our, in our Autodot network, we now have a group set up. I'm going to rename this still objects. And it's got a list of all of the objects that are in this group. And I see that I accidentally selected the ground plane. So in fact, I can just delete that. And we've got the name here of all of the bricks that I just selected. And now that, and I'm going to change the name of the group here to $OS, so it matches the group name here. And now I'm going to add an active value node. And what the active value does is adjusts a parameter on the objects it applies to, which is the active value parameter. If that parameter is 1, then the solver solves the object as if it was a rigid body. If the active value is 0, it treats the object as a static body. And we want these bricks around the edge to be static. So we want an active value of 0, and we want to use the group that we just created, still objects. Now it leaves the star in there, I must delete that because that would select every group. And now if I just move one forward in my simulation, let's have a look. Group naught is in this group of still objects. If I bring up a details view, and have a look at group naught and at the solver parameters and active value. 
we should find that that is zero, but in fact it's one. And the reason for that is that we need to set this at every frame. And we can see that it now becomes zero. Now with that set up, let's try and run the simulation again. And as before, I'm going to pause this and come back when a few more frames have been simulated. So this is what it now looks like. So far, so good. But then we're getting a very slow process here of these bricks breaking away from the others. And they're interpenetrating each other, as we can see. And that's going to cause some problems. So there's one last thing we can do on the solver to try and resolve this, which is to increase this value here. And what this does is add an extra pass at the end of the solver process to try to spring these bricks apart if they're inter interlocking. So I'm going to rewind. I will simulate this one final time and pause the video. So that's now simulated the full 100 frames, and we can have a look. And that looks pretty good. Let's zoom out and see it from a distance. Well, with the addition of some dust and some smoke, that would be a pretty good effect. Thank you.